thank you, Jane. Uh, so my name is John Rasick. I'm a uh, senior lecturer in the School of Art, Architecture, and Design. Uh, I teach in Comprehensive Design, which is a new degree program. Uh, it sort of straddles architecture and industrial design. Um, we were asked to um, work with Paoli. I'm, I'm going to talk. I've done. This is my third sustaining Hoosier community project currently. Um, I'm going to talk about one in particular and sort of dig into that. Um, we were asked by um, the, the city of Paoli in Orange County to uh, create or help design a accessible playground. Um, and uh, we had a couple different goals. Uh, the first one was uh, create some research on accessible playgrounds. Uh, there was currently none in, I think, anywhere in Orange County. Um, create some data on regional uh, disability needs, come up with a list of grants, create a rough budget, and then create presentation ma materials about the design. Um, I, this was a 200 level design class, and so this was a big lift for some of these students, uh, but they did an amazing job. Um, so the first thing we did was try to figure out, and this is something I do in my studio, is the accessible playground really the project? And um, we did this, this process of, of what I call empathetic understanding, where we try to, we do surveys, we do interviews, uh, we do some ethnographic studies, and we try to really figure out if this is the right project. We're, we're defining the problem. Um, yes, they, they've come to us and said, this is what we want, but we want to really understand what that means. Uh, and so we, f we realized through this process that they were looking for a public space um, that reflected who the town was and the history of the town. Um, and so we had to understand who that was. And so this is our, our process, uh, a pre-design, a schematic design, and then a development. First thing we did was try to understand this idea of placemaking. Um, what is it to make a place um, instead of a space? And so we looked at a lot of precedent. And then we, through, again, this process of, of interviews and, and talking and surveys, uh, trying to understand who are the constituents in this, in this small town. And we broke them up into uh, five different groups. Young families, uh, the elderly, middle and high school students, uh, people with disabilities, and then business owners, and then other. Um, and so through this process, we really kind of chipped away at what people were looking for. Uh, and that ranged from a dog park to um, some sort of uh, public art that reflected um, the work uh, or the history of the town. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. Um, there was, there's a new um, festival or music event that happens in the summer, and they wanted a, an event space for that. Um, they wanted some sort of nature trail. Uh, they wanted some sort of um, exercise equipment for uh, seniors. Uh, and so we, we this, this small scope of an accessible playground soon exploded into something larger. Um, but it was all very exciting and the town was, was very um, supportive of what we were trying to do. Uh, and so we did lots of sketching, we did lots of um, model making, trying to understand materiality, uh, and we ended up with something that looks like this. Um, and I'll sort of break down some of these parts. Each of them, each part, instead of um, approaching this project with, well, we're going to have an accessible playground, and that's where people with disabilities would go. We, uh, we took the approach of, of creating every single element having universal design. And so, um, so we were still meeting the original uh, project, the original goal of the project, which was to create some spaces for people with disabilities, but we did that throughout the site. Um, and so here are some quick images that the, the students created. This was a project that paid heritage or, or paid respect to the heritage of, of limestone carving in the town. Um, there was um, playground equipment. There was sort of non-traditional playground equipment. Uh, there were sensory walls. Um, there was a very expensive uh, net uh, design. Um, there was a a wall that, that sort of fulfilled their need to talk about history. Um, and so these, these panel systems uh, talked about some of the old architecture in the buildings, uh, so old architecture in, in the town. Uh, there was this project that sort of spoke to an old uh, iron bridge that, that used to be in the town. Um, and so all the projects had, you know, little different reflections of uh, different needs that the, that the town had articulated. 
the, the design students uh, were able to create a budget. Uh, I think it was created to the penny, uh, which I explained to them is not how budgets work, but they were, <laughs> they were relentless with their, their uh, Excel document. Um, and so they, <laughs> these, poor, these poor suppliers across uh, southern Indiana were being bombarded with my students' calls about how much does, you know, one pound of gravel cost and things like that. Um, they were also, um, they took on create a, creating a website because they determined that that was the best way of, of communicating this project to the larger community. They created a, um, a logo. Um, they were really engaged, and this is, I think, what speaks to the power of these, these projects. Um, there was one instance where, so it's a three-hour studio. We were able to, at two different occasions, to get a bus, hop on the bus, and, and drive down. But we were only able to stay there for about an hour. Uh, and the students felt like this was not enough. Uh, we had community members come up to IU a lot, but they wanted to be there in the town and walk the site and really spend some time there and get to know uh, who the, these townspeople were and, and what the site was really about. And so on a Saturday morning, they said, we're going to meet. We're going to go on, our, on your own. We don't need you, John, which was great because it was a Saturday morning. Uh, and they, they went and uh, they spent the day there. And they met people and they talked to people. Uh, and they, they did it on their own. So I was, I was thrilled to see that happen. Um, but they, yeah, they were passionate. They understood that people were relying on them. This was d just not another assignment. Um, and so it was, it was a powerful experience. And that's why I keep doing these projects. Um, and so that, that's them at the final presentation with um, community members as well as a model. So I guess in terms of going forward, uh, my, my work, my interest, my research is about community-based design. Uh, and so I've been using some of these projects as a um, sort of a launching point for further conversations in these towns. Um, currently, the, the project I did um, two semesters ago was a uh, gateway sculpture for Bedford and Mitchell. Uh, I'm currently making fabrication drawings for them. We're pricing out the job. Uh, this project, I'm trying to connect uh, some of the people down at Paoli who would be in charge of, of making this project happen with some of the resources here at IU as well as some of the resources uh, here in Bloomington. Uh, and then this semester, we're working on a uh, rural housing project, which um, hopefully will yield some pretty exciting results. Thank you.